Okay, yeah, so we've got this problem where it refreshes every time. So we're going to address that by setting path name directly. I don't know if this is going to work, but we'll see if it does. Okay, so we're going to use on click, which works just like a button. Yeah, you'll notice that we, we're getting this JSX ally error here because we don't have an href attribute. We definitely need to address that, and we will later on in the video, I promise. Window location.pathName equals that. Yeah, you'll notice we've lost our formatting because we don't have a, an href, so it doesn't have the underline or like the color or anything. But we can still click on it, and it didn't work. This is pretty much the same as just using an href. In fact, if we use an href, then it literally is the same. It can be useful, but it's not what we want right now. There's this thing called the window history API, and that has this method called push state. And if you look at push state, it takes a data, a title, and a URL. Like 99% of the time, you can just ignore these. And I'm going to have a bonus video that goes into what they are, but for now, you can just put in null, empty string, and then where you want to go. To where it about. Then we increment, and we go home. Hey, check it out. We were able to reroute without resetting our state. The only problem is it didn't affect our application. It still thinks that we're in the about state, which makes sense because we're only setting path name once here at the beginning, and it's not, it's not going to get updated. We need to represent path name in state, so we're just going to use a uh, use state. Now we've got path name in state, and along with pushing the state, we want to set it to our new thing. So now, if we go from another route, we got some state, check it out. Changes our internal state, and we're able to do that, and we haven't lost anything. But we still have a problem, which is that when we try to go backwards or forwards, nothing changes. We want to trigger a re-render when that happens, so we need to use a window event called pop state. Pop state fires when you go backwards or forwards, and we want to update our state when that happens. If we go backwards or forwards, um, we get that event, and we're able to set it in our state. Hey, check it out. We did everything. Um, you might wonder why this is called pop state and push state. Um, it's because, well, the pop part uh, and po pop and push come from the fact that this is a stack. Uh, history is represented as a stack. And we're going to have a bonus video of why it pops state, what, what state is in there for. Now I'm worried about this uh, JSX ally warning, and it doesn't look right, um, so it just really fixes everything if we do this. Um, we don't get the warning anymore, and now let's save it, and you can see now it looks like a link again. The only problem, though, is that now it's going to reset the href every time and it's going to refresh our window. Um, so how do we prevent that? Well, there's something that's literally called prevent default. Um, so when we click it, we're going to prevent the default behavior of using this href. And now we're able to go back home and use it just like um, link in React Router, and this is actually what Link does under the hood in React Router. So yeah, speaking of Link, it kind of sucks to copy and paste all of this um, for both of these guys, so we're, we're going to create our own Link component here. And just like React Router, it takes a 2, which we use for our href, and then to do our other stuff, we're going to use a function called update path name and we're going to use two with it. So yeah, let's use it. Actually, what I'm going to do is take this out and, and, and put it in its own function up here called update path name. Um, and I'm just going to put update path name in there. Now I got to delete the old anchor tag and we're going to use link for the other anchors. So what do you know? We've re-implemented React Router and now we want to go beyond it. We have this problem where if we make a typo, it still compiles. We want to get an error for that, and likewise up here. To do that, we're going to use something called a union type, and that's the topic of our next video, so stay tuned.